Hi, this introduction to DR will give a general workflow overview, showing how we can take raw environmental data and turn it into a more intuitive visualization. So we will begin by parsing an EPW file, filtering the large amount of data for a specific environmental factor, and then spatializing and colorizing this information with a heat map. A heat map plots specific data organized by hour of the day in the y-axis and day of the year in the x-axis, which makes it easy to perceive data trends over time. In this example, the heat map is plotting the temperature over the course of a year in San Francisco, but I'll show you how you can quickly adapt the visualization to incorporate other environmental information. So to begin this exercise, we're going to use the parse EPW component, which is found under the D hour acquire and EPW tab. We're going to insert the file location using a panel, and notice how I've doubled the slashes in this file location. From this, we're able to understand the location, time zone, coordinates, etc., of this site. But what we're most interested in is looking at the primitive D hour, which is holding 27 environmental keys. By right clicking on this, we're able to see a list of them. So let's try spatializing this information. Under the Spatialize tab, I'm going to click Heat Map and plug in these D hours. And we'll see that a heat map has appeared in the top view of Rhino. You're able to adjust the location and dimensions of this map by changing those inputs. So by zooming in, we're able to see that the points, regions, and black mesh of this heat map are previewed. But to simplify our view of the mesh, I'm going to turn off the heat map preview. And zooming back out, we aren't able to glean much from this currently all black band. So let's insert some colorization. Under the D hour colorize, there's a gradient colorization tool where we can plug in the D hours. And now we're going to choose a specific key which we are going to map. So by right clicking that D hour again, I'm able to left click on dry bulb temperature. This retains that name, which I can then paste into a panel and connect. It is also asking for two more components, the high and low colors that will be representing the high and low values within this spectrum. So by double clicking, I can search color swatch. And for this example, I'm going to set white to mean my highest or hottest value. And I'm going to change here, this swatch by double clicking, I can adjust the hue to be a deeper blue to represent my colder temperatures. So plugging this in, we're now able to see this spectrum of color. However, it's still difficult to discern specificity within these hours. For example, for which of these times would I need to wear a jacket? So let's insert that as well. Pull these over and we're going to insert an hour conditional filter. By plugging in the D hours again and by using the same temperature key, we're now going to compare temperature to a specific value. So in this case, I'm going to set my operator to be less than a value of 17 degrees Celsius. Our preview has momentarily disappeared, but that can be adjusted by changing the preview setting on the heat map. And now we're able to view this binary condition of which hours are less than 17 degrees. Zooming out for the year though, it looks like I will be wearing a jacket. So how can we view both this hour filter and color gradation at the same time? Well, luckily, um, Giulio Piacentino has come up with a script for that. So we will plug that in. And it is asking for a geometry for which I'm going to pull the points from our heat map, and a color, which I am taking from our gradient color component. And now turning off our heat map preview, 
we are able to view this combined heat map. And so if you wanted to bake these colored points, you could simply click this Click to Bake tab. Now to embed another layer of environmental information into this analysis, we are going to try changing one of the keys, the one for gradient color. So going back to our D-Hour, we're right-clicking, and I'm going to pull the total sky cover key name and paste that in. And now you can see that the visualization has changed, where the white now represents heavy cloud cover and the blue represents low cloud cover or blue sky. So that wraps up this introduction to a couple powerful D-Hour tools that I hope you'll be able to put to good use.